Good morning. I'm laughing because of mom swift. <laughs> but good morning. Thank you for joining us today. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice in it. All right. All right? Not we will. We shall rejoice in it. My God. Um, it's good to be here. It's good to be alive. In spite of, I, I, I've lost, my, my nephew has lost his, uh, his brother that ran over, literally, by a dump truck. Not hit, ran over. And they're young. I'm not as young, but I'm still here. I've done things that I should have died. I've been places where I should have died, but God saw fit. To have me be here today. God saw fit to have you be here today. And we should be thankful. You know what? If we stop asking God for something and just do what God said to do, then what he promised us would overtake us. Because he said birds don't, they don't do anything, they don't sow any seed. Well, yet God provides for them. And how much more are we than birds? So I want to take the time to pray a prayer of thanksgiving for the prayers that have gone before us. And I want to add some more people at the foot of God's throne. Because I know people are hurting in my family and my church family. So please. Pray with me. Father God, in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for the healing that you are doing in all of our families, for the reconciliation, the repentance, and forgiveness in all of our families in the name of Christ Jesus. Father God, I thank you for you giving your peace to our families in the name of Christ Jesus. And I ask, Father God, personally for forgiveness, for ignoring your teachings in that area in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father God, that those of us that know you as Lord and Savior will take some quiet time to listen to the voice of God where you are. It's not hard. Thank you, Father God. I thank you for your correction because you love me enough to correct me. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, I thank you for the mercies that you have given all of us. Again, not because of who we are, but because of your grace, we are here. I thank you, Father God, for the healing in all of our bodies, in the bodies of all of our friends, our neighbors, and our families, in the name of Christ Jesus. Father God, I pray for the families who are suffering loss of loved ones. There is nothing I could say or do to ease the pain so, Father God, I ask that you, in all of your godliness, all of your wisdom, reach them where they are. Touch them, Father God. Let them know that you love them. Let them know, Father God, that what has happened is not a judgment against them. In the name of Christ Jesus, I pray, Father God, that they do not take responsibility of that loss in the name of Christ Jesus. I pray, Father God, that they would not say, if I had been there, if I had said this or that, Father God, have them to renew their mind, Father God. Clear their mind, Father God. Have them to cast those burdens upon you, Lord Jesus. I 
pray, Father God, for the sick and the shunning. I pray, Father God, that what you have done, those stripes you have taken, the diseases you have taken upon, your own body, that we, Father God, will receive the healing in the name of Christ Jesus of whatever ailment or disease it is, be it emotional, spiritual, or physical, in the name of Christ Jesus. Father God, I pray right now for the speaker of the hour, which is you. But I pray, Father God, that Mom Swift will allow her to be used by you. And every word that comes out of her mouth will be what thus saith the Lord. I pray a special anointing, Father God, upon her in the name of Christ Jesus. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you give us all an ear to hear and a heart to receive what thus saith the Lord, be it today or ten years from now, in the name of Christ Jesus. Because we know, Father God, your word keeps. So thank you, Father God. Have your Ishibada. Yeah, Lord, have your way today, Lord Jesus. In this service, it is all about you. All about you. Fill your temple with your veil in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence. And thank you for your grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, Lord Jesus. Yay, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord You're Jesus. You're worthy, God. Yes, Praise. Yes, Lord Jesus. You're worthy, yes, God. Lord I give Jesus. God honor and yes, glory Lord. this morning. Yes, Lord I praise Jesus. your name yes, this Lord. morning, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Yes. Magnifying you, Lord yes. God. Yes. Humbling yes. myself before you, Lord yes, God. Lord Worshiping yes, Lord. you, Lord God. Yes. Because you're worthy. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes,
any goodness of me, Lord yes. God. Yes. Not because I'm good and, yes. and because I'm right, Lord God. Yes. I stand, Lord God, because you called me, Lord God. You called me by name and I answered yes. the call. Yes. I answered the yes. call. And I thank you for it, Lord God, yes. even in this trying time. Yes, Lord. I stand because of you. Yes, Lord. I worship because of you, Lord. I love you, Lord God. I magnify you. This is, I don't know, I guess I'm going to my message or sometime or down the road or whatever, but I want to say this morning before I start, God's plan for you and I. He knows the plan. And it is a good plan. A plan not to harm you, nor to hurt you. It is not God's desire for the way of Christian living to be hard, to be down, to be drug out, to feel like I can barely make it. In fact, feel like I don't even want to make it. Yep. I don't even want to serve God. Yep. That is not God. That's right. When God calls you and you and I surrender, oh, I'm not saying the devil ain't going to be there. <laughs> but when he calls you, and you walk in that calling, and you accept that calling, yes. you can have joy unspeakable in the midst of time. You can just know that you know and know in your heart and whom you trust and whom you believe. And thank God for his mercy, his grace. And as Elder Chan said, I stand corrected. I received the correction, Lord, that God used for. I received it, Lord God. And I thank you for it. Because it can only help me yes, yes. to walk out this walk. Yes. And the people you're calling me to be in yes. this time. Yes. I just, I want to encourage you. To seek God in this hour, not because of what I might say or what you think, or but this is a time to know your God. Yes. This is a time to know God for yourself. Yes. And yes, we still need to come together as a body. Yes. But you need to know that you know that you know in whom you believe, whom you're serving. Yes. And then you need to know why. Yes. You need to know why. Amen. And when the why is, it's about him. That's right. That's the why. It's about him. Yes. It's about God. Yes. It's about me. And when I say God, I have said this before. When I say God, you know, people just say, okay, here we go again. God. No. When I say it's about God, it's about his purpose. It's about his kingdom. It's about what he said that he want in the earth. And we as his people are to carry it out. We are to carry out his purpose. So again, I thank you for taking the time to just be here, whether it's in person or online, that God would just touch our hearts and our minds. And I am going to, I'm asking to go on into my message and but I feel to say that God's yoke is easy. Yes, yes. And his burdens are light. Yes. God's yoke is easy. When we are yoked up with God, when we come under the yoke of God, yes. it is not a burden to serve God. No. It is not a burden to worship God. It is not a burden to do the work of God. Mm -hmm. So I thank you, Lord, this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm thinking it's been a while since I've, seems like it's been a long time since I've been <laughs> up here a while or whatever. And you know me, I always begin to start talking about what's going on out in the world and what's happening and, you know, migrant times and, you know, I mean, the only thing I can say, Wow, wow, wow. 
I remember uh, a couple of months back, I was saying, remember where you were two and a half years ago oh. and where you are now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm saying that like something's changed. <laughs> Listen, nothing's changed. We're still in the middle of a virus. Mm -hmm. We're still in the middle of monkey pox. So we still in the middle of uh, anger and raging and, and, and all the things. Are, but to remember where you were and to remember where you are now in Christ. Yes. And are you where God is taking you, leading you, mm. guiding you, mm. wanting you to know him personally? And when we talk about love, sometimes I think we think of the human love. You know, but God's love is deeper than that. God loves us when He corrects us. Yes. He loves us when we go through hard times. Yes. He loves us when we're on the mountaintop. Yes. And He does not say we're never going to go through anything. He never said we're not going to have any trials. Mm -hmm. We're never going to have any problems. But He promised to be with us. Yes. So I spoke about where are you and where are you going. And then the next month I said something to the effect about uh, when God speaks, what is my response? What is your response? And it was God's part and our part. To know that there is always a partnership that we are working with God. We are never doing anything by ourselves. It's a partnership. We are in a time of anyone else can say what you can see. I mean, I've been talking to the pastor and I say, you know what? We can wake up tomorrow morning and the United States will be no more. Yep. True. I mean, that's how close. And I'm not even talking about the end of time. I'm just saying, I'm not talking about the rapture, I'm not talking about, I'm just saying the way things are going, we do not know, really, the plans of God. He allows us to know something. And that's why we have to trust him. Yes. When we see and hear and feel things going on, we still have to trust his plan. We have to trust his purpose. Yes. We have to trust his word. We have to know that we know that we know that what he said is going to come to pass. Amen, that's right. What God says is going to come to pass yes. is going to come to pass. So what better place for us to be in a position to be in a place of healing mm -hmm. than in a place of knowing mm -hmm. and not knowing in our own self and our own strength but knowing that God is leading and guiding and directing our lives. So I thought about when I mentioned two and a half years ago and where we are now. I thought and was thinking we don't understand but God is a God of thought. God is a God of thought. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And he worked, and he methodically worked, line upon line, line upon line. God is working. And if we have ears to hear and eyes to see, we will see that God is moving in all of this world. We will see that God is being magnified if we want to see him magnified. But he is magnified anyway. Yes. And we see him high and lifted up. God is a God of process. And when I think of God being a God of process, and yes, I am a teacher, sorry. <laughs> when I think of God as being a God of process, I think of the time, the skills, and the ability. That God has given each of us. And I'm talking about time of process. What happened two and a half years ago, where you are now, 
that which you believe you understand that part your part and thinking about the process I want you to say no ouch 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 yikes ouch we do not like the process we think God's time is not right. God's time is not our time. The way we would want things to happen. The way we would see and believe things should happen. Yes. But God is still working with us. God is still a God of process. And he's processing, think about it individually. Mm -hmm. He's processing each of our lives. Called us by name. Yes. Every single one of us have been given the same amount of time. Every single one of us. 24 hours a day. Yep. However many days in the week we can mm -hmm. seven. Maybe in the month, 30, 30. We get the yes. exact same amount. We can't say, God, you're unfair. <laughs> we can't say, Lord, uh, you know, how come this and how come that? We have the exact yes. same amount of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to be willing to ask God, Lord, today, this day, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to say? And I'm not talking about it in a religious way. And the reason why I'm talking, because sometimes we make God this religious God yeah. that doesn't fit in with our everyday life. Yes. And we leave, we leave this God that we talk about at the church door. Yes. Because we don't know and figure out how he works with us every day. How he works with us when we wake up in the morning. And, he may, and you may not be speaking in tongues. And, and you may not even be running around your house. And, and you may be on your job working. But you don't, we don't understand the process that God is even working then right on your job. That's right. The time mm -hmm. that you have. And in a moment. Yes. In an yes. instant, yes. even on your job, God yes. will speak to you. Yes. Say, it. Mm -hmm. pray for that sister. Yes. yes. Pray for that brother. Sometimes we wonder, why am I here? Right. Why I'm in this job? Why yes. I'm there? Why I'm over here? Right. God will use you in any season of time if you're open to it. If we're open to it. And God wants us to steward our time. Yes. So when I say steward, I mean, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Stewardship is the careful, careful, and this is what I'm saying, careful mm -hmm. responsibility management of something entrusted to one's care. Yep. Do we think that our time is God's time. Do we even think like that? Or do we even pray? And when we are walking and asking and seeking God, mm -hmm. I don't, like I said again, I don't want you to have this picture that you're on your knees somewhere. You, you know you're in a corner somewhere. You're, you're fasting. Mm -hmm. you're, it's called walking in the spirit. It is not maybe even speaking in tongues or pray. It is called being in tune to God that you would manage your time wisely. The devil wants you to waste your time. Yes. Oh, he wants you to run around, run around a circle, run around, run around, and I'm raising my hand on that one. Run around, run around. Um, Lord, didn't I, didn't I see the same point? Wait a minute. Look like I saw this point before going around and around the same mountain. Around and around and around. The same mountain. Not util utilizing the time. The devil wants your time. Yes. And he will steal your time. Yes. Any way he knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, I want to preface it. That I'm trying to be practical. 
comfortable about talking about God. Because God is an everyday God. He lives right where you live at. He knows what you think, how you feel. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows your responses, whether they're good, whether they're bad. He knows all, everything about that. Yes. I'm talking about this portion of the message, talking about time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says, one scripture read, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. I'm up for it. And trust me, I can look back and I can say what it should have put upon me. I can say ouch. I can say it. Some of those what it should have put us was just not Man managing my time. Yes. Managing my time. Mm -hmm. My time with God. My time with family. Knowing the time it is to work. I remember, I have to always tell this little story when I first, first got saved. And um, I thought I was doing God a favor <laughs> by going to church. Because mm -hmm. we do think we're doing God a favor, right? Yes. I, I'm going to church. Mm -hmm. So I used to lie to go to the revival because I used to work for that trip. And I just thought God was patting me on the back. Yep. He was saying, you go, girl. You love me. You know, you love me. Oh, wait a minute. And finally, correction came. Mm -hmm. You have to know and manage your time according to what is yes. right. Yes, yes. Just because I wanted to go to church. And say, uh, I'm serving God. God did not accept that offer. But he let me do it. You know, he, and this is what I'm talking about. God is a God of pressure. He let us go through things. He let us go through hard times. We go through a learning process. Uh, you know, I'm just going to read a few other scriptures that talk, deal with time. Look carefully then how you walk. Not as an unwise, but as a wise person making the best use of time. For everything there is a season. Work, play, time with God, fun. It's a time and a season for every single thing. God wants us to know him and to walk with him in such boldness and such confidence that it is not a struggle. It is not a burden. It is not like I have to or I'm going to die. It's going, it's, he wants us to be in a place where we want to serve yes, him. Yes, yes. We are excited about serving yes. him. We are yes. glad that we are called by his name. Yes, that's right. It's a time and a season yes. for all things. Another point, God gives skills and abilities. See, I'm, I want to be practical yes. about this. About how God might use you or mm -hmm. speak to you. Mm -hmm. You ever look at someone and you say, I wonder how they knew how to do this. Or, Where did they get that gift for drawing at? Yes. Yes. Or, or they get for writing, or or singing, or communicating. I wonder, I wonder why. I wonder how. Mm -hmm. The word of God has the answer. Exodus 31. 1 through 6. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. See, I have chosen the Miziel, son of Uri, the son of Ur, the tribe of Judah, and I have filled, listen, listen, I have filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom and understanding and knowledge, with all kinds of skills. With all kinds of skills, God says, I have filled this person, but not only him, but you and I, every single person, no matter who you are, you have skills.
skills yes. and abilities right. to be used by God and to be magnified. Yes, amen. Every yes. single person, he said, yes. he had filled him with the Spirit of God. Yes. Can you imagine that uh, you are a teacher to young people? And maybe even this young people might be like disabled. But God will use you right there yes. to speak life. How many times you've heard people say, if it wasn't for that teacher, yes. if it wasn't for this person or, 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 or that person that spoke into my life, mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, God uses you where you are. Yes. He right. will use you where you right. are. You don't have to keep struggling and searching and, and say, well, I have to be this to be measured up to God. I have to be like this to be measured up to God. God knows, and he gives skills and abilities yes. that when you use those skills and abilities, you magnify God. Yes. You ain't preaching. Right. You may not even be giving a scripture, right. but your life is speaking. Right. Your life is preaching. Yep. Your love is preaching. Mm -hmm. So he does give skills. Of, don't think you are nothing because you don't have a title. That's right. Mm -hmm. Come to, we need to just sometimes forget about the title and just walk and serve God. I'll continue on with the, the scripture. Uh, he filled them with the spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skill to make artistic, listen, make artistic designs for work and gold mm -hmm. and silver and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of crafts. Mm -hmm. Crafts. Hmm. I wonder why I just look at some people and it seems like they're so artistic. Yep. <laughs> they can they can wrap a package and it, 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 it looks so beautiful and it just like it's just like they have a magic. Yes. Mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. God's imprint yes. is on every single one, and I'm talking about the natural because yes. sometimes people think. Because I'm not a Christian, I don't have skills and ability. That God gives us all skills yes. and ability. It's just where we want to magnify yes. and acknowledge that it comes from God. Yes, right. It doesn't come from man. Yes, you can enhance your yes. skills and ability, yeah. but they come yeah. from God. Yeah. And he gives each one of us one. Yeah. I mean, you can be mentally challenged. I know I did work uh, at the disabled home. And it used to amaze me how in some area of their life, and the, the some area I'm talking about, mm -hmm. this one particular girl, her memory was like a photographic memory. She could remember you. She would never forget you. you two or three years later, she'd see you at the store. She still remembered you. She may be challenged in other ways, but that's God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imprint in her life. Don't think it's strange. More, uh, moreover, I'm reading, I have appointed of uh, 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 Olivia, son of uh, uh, a of the tribe of Dan, to help him. Also, I have given ability to all, I have given ability, ability to all the skilled workers to make everything I have commanded. To make everything I have to make. You have everything that God wants you to have. Yes. It's up to you mm -hmm. to walk in it. Yes. To serve. He's given us skill and ability. And I want to take a Get ready to be up on the church some more. <laughs> Don't fall for the religious trap, please. Don't fall for the religious trap. The trap that says the only thing that God is interested in is your spiritual growth. Your spiritual life. He's only interested in you because he's a spirit and he's God. And he's, God. he's only interested in you if you're a preacher, if you're a pastor, if you're a deacon. 
If you are uh, some title, blah, 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 whatever you want to, don't fall for that. Yes. Don't fall for that religious prayer. And it is not God's prayer. I said a religious prayer. Yes, yes. God has given each one of us, as I said, ability. Yes. And I, like I said, we don't go to church again. They have to say, we, the church, have advocated our case yes. in the world. I'm going to say it again. Yes. We, the church, have advocated our place in the world. Be in the world, but not of the world. Yes. Right. We have stepped away, and not only have we stepped away, we're satisfied being in our own corner yes. and running around the building and doing religious things yes. instead yes. of just living out our lives. Yes. yes, we need to develop it. Yes, we need to know the, uh, what God has for a particular yes. uh, call to side body. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about this every day. Yes. Like when you just wake up, like when it's every day, how you go, how how you do, how you 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 treat people. God sees that you do not have to have a title. That's right. To be used of God and to use of God greatly, That's you right. just have to know that and walk with that. Yes. And be in peace with that, and just let God use you where you are. Again. Talking about the process, God's process, how He works with us in time, not our time. How He works with us with skills and ability if we allow Him to. Do we realize that there is not one place that God will not allow a Christian to be in? Don't take it to the wrong place. I'm not talking about like a fast food house or something like that. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? But I'm just saying you can be in the arts and crafts. You yeah. can be a director of a movie. You know what I mean? You can be out there. And more and more I am seeing people speak in those arenas and say that God has placed them there. And they are a mouthpiece for God. God wants us in every sphere of life. Every single one. And I'm not... And I don't, I'm not getting into politics. I don't know about, you know, us Christians going in and dominating anything because God has called us to influence. Yes. He has called us to love. Yes. We are known by our love to help others. We are known because we have a desire to uh, strengthen someone else that may not even be in the church. Yes. You do not have to be in the church, per se, for me to help, or a Christian to help, yes. or to love you, or to encourage you, to be all that you can be. So again, do not fall into that trap. That the only way I can really show that I'm growing in Christ is if I'm a real I say a preacher, preacher, pastor, deacon, you know, elder, you know, then I'm moving on up. You can have all those titles and not even be a Christian. Yes. Yep. So the title does not make you a Christian. You are a Christian because you're called by him. Yes. And you answer his call. Yes. Now the last thing in the arena that I'm talking about that I believe that God wants to use us in. And I, when I say money, people might, people automatically gonna say, okay, now she's setting me up. <laughs> she, she setting me up now. She, she did all that talking about skills in the building. Now she's setting me up. You're gonna start talking about money and, and how it's a blessing to give. And, uh, you know, it's a blessing, more of a blessing to give. And, you know, blah, blah. No. That, that's not where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. But we know that the world had made money their God. Yes. We know we need money. Yes. But what are you doing with the money you have? Mm. There you go. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask again. <laughs> not talking about how, I, what you're saying, Ty. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Not talking about how much you give.
give to the church right now. Yes. I'm saying the money yes. that you have, yes. what do you do with that money? Mm. Mm -hmm. Do you honor God in any way with that money? How could you honor God some way and somehow? Could you maybe hand out a five dollar McDonald card to somebody? Yep. A homeless person on the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you go maybe and help a single mom mm -hmm. with her kids and babysit for her to have uh -huh. some respite time? Yes. yes. So sure. money. Time, skills, and abilities, yep. and all of these things are all wrapped up that God wants us to think about each of those areas. We love it. Like I say, I don't even want to read Malachi 3 and 10 because we used to run like <laughs> You know, do this and don't see won't I pour out a blessing on you. You know, what you know, we love those kind of scriptures. We just uh, we just want to hear mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. how God is going to bless us, mm -hmm. how He's going to give to us, how He's going to make us healthy, wealthy, wise, yes. whatever. Yes. It's always about Him giving to us. Yes. How about us giving to others? Yes. Mm. It may not even be money, money. But in kind is as good as money. Yes. When you do something for someone, like I said, babysit for a single mom, mm -hmm. or when she mm -hmm. can go out and have dinner or something like yes. that, that's, that's money. Yes. Because she can have to pay bills. That's right. So in many, many ways, we have to have, especially in this day and age, the right attitude about money. We cannot have this attitude that it's all about this building up, this stack of money. The right attitude is God. Help me to utilize my money to the benefit of my family. I said family first. Yes. Benefit of my family, my neighbors, my friends, my community. Sharing. <laughs> How about just sharing? How about just plain sharing what you have yes. with others? Yes. Help those in need. Mm -hmm. Take control of your own spending. You know what I mean? So in this country is a very materialistic country. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. That drives this country. Mm -hmm. Yes, you should you know you should pay your tithes. I'm not saying that. But God wants us to recognize these things that he has given us. Time. He has given us skills and abilities. And he does give us money. I mean, we always feel like we don't have enough. <laughs> we always want more. Yes. But he has given us these things. I'm thinking that I'm winding down. King Solomon said it so wisely. He said the whole conclusion of the matter is to fear God. Keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. Another scripture says to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your strength, with all of your mind. I'm going to give each person a challenge in here and out there. You don't have to do it, but this is the challenge. This coming week, write down every single thing you do for your time. This week, think how God has gifted you with something gifted you in some way. Mm. And just mark down how you use it. Mm -hmm. Lastly, your money. Just think about how you spend your money. How you use your money. Yes. Is it 
to encourage? Is it to support? Is it to help? Or is it to hoard? Or just to say I have it? Or is it just used for trivial things, fun? So that's the challenge to everyone. Don't you? You have to write it down. Oh, you can think in your brain. I did this, I did that, I said this, I went here. No. Write down everything concerning your time, what you do. You will see. You will see. Not me. Where your love is. Mm. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Skills and abilities, same thing with money. Mm -hmm. You will know how these things are benefiting or hurting you. And that's why I say I want this to be practical. But sometimes we yes. talk yes. about God, we mm -hmm. give scriptures, and mm -hmm. we know the scriptures, mm -hmm. and, and, and then when we literally go out of this building, mm -hmm. we seemingly do not know how to apply this simple fact of God, this simple love of God, this simple instructions of God. We don't know how to apply them to our natural life. Mm -hmm. So I thank God this morning for who he is. And Lord, you see and you know everyone that heard under the sound of my voice that we would reflect that we would just say Lord here I am just as I am Lord I ask that you make yourself known to me that I may walk with you, that I may talk with you, that I may know, that I know, that I know that you are real, that I know that God is alive in my heart. So I ask for those that don't know the Lord, just say, and it's not a format, a format won't save you. We use Romans 10 and 9, a format. Just speak the word. And say, God, I want to know you. I realize I cannot make it in this world. The pressure is too great. The battle is too strong. The warfare is too heavy for me to make it in this world without you. And I need you to lead me and guide me. Forgive me. Help me to start out on this journey with you. In Jesus' name. And for those of us that know the Lord, that we may know him more clearly, that we may love him Serve him, not out of duty, but out of joy, with gladness of heart. That it would not be drudgery. That we would use our time. We would use our talents. Right? We would use our money. Right where we are. On your job, your home, wherever we are. That we would allow you to. Next Sunday morning, we will be having Bishop Gill from Harvest Fellowship in Springfield. I'm saying it like that. 
because he really is a great man of God. He yes, really is yes. a great speaker. Yes. And I'm believing and, and trusting God as he comes that he will deliver a word yes. for those that have not been coming out, come out and join us. For those yes. that don't have a church home, come out and join us. Yes. And just come out expecting. Yes. And this is even to me, sometimes, you know, you can get um, like in a rut. Mm. You can come to church not even expecting it. Enough. Yes. You can come to church just because you're supposed to come. You yes. know what I mean? Just show up and, you know, there you are. Yep. But to come expecting to hear mm -hmm. from God. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying it because, you know, uh, we have a guest speaker. But I'm saying even for me that that needs to be my heart. Mm -hmm. That needs to be my thoughts. That when I come to say I am coming to assemble myself with mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters to meet God. Yes. Yes. To meet God. That's yes. what. Yes. So come out uh, next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and worship with us. And again, as I said, come expecting uh, to be blessed and to hear a word.